So let's now define some of these properties of uh, water. Uh, these are general definitions. What do we mean by heat and what do we mean by temperature? Temperature is essentially the kind of energy that is uh, contained by uh, a substance. So the molecules, whether it's a solid or a liquid or a gas, the molecules are constantly moving, even though in a solid, obviously, they are moving uh, very far, that's not moving very far, they're held together very close, so if you put a solid into a glass, it's not going to take the shape of the glass, whereas if you pour a liquid into a glass, it's going to be free enough to take the shape of uh, the glass, right? So the temperature is what you measure by putting in a thermometer, and the thermometer is being bombarded by the molecules of the substance, and the kinetic energy that is uh, contained in these molecules is the measure of the temperature. Heat, on the other hand, is a amount of energy contained by a certain number of molecules, right? So if you have a glass of hot water, it has a certain amount of heat. It depends on how long it takes to cool. So amount of heat will determine how long it will take to cool, whereas if you just put the, temp uh, the thermometer in it, it'll just tell you what is the average temperature of uh, the liquid you have in it. So you have to kind of intuitively develop the sense of what is heat and what is uh, temperature. So heat is essentially the transfer of both kinetic and potential energy from one object to another because of the temperature differences. So the heat flows from a high temperature to a low temperature, and the temperature changes when the heat either flows out or flows in, right? So temperature is the average kinetic energy. Calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature, and the definition is that one calorie is the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree centigrade. We often talk about calories in a food, uh, uh, substance, like uh, how many calories does one banana have? Those are kilocalories, that's kind of a equivalence of energy unit that we carry, but here it is just the energy that you need to raise one gram of water by one degree centigrade. We need the definition of freezing and boiling points. So freezing point is equal to the melting point for water, so that's at zero degree centigrade. You know that if the water reaches zero degree centigrade, it begins to freeze unless it has salts in it, right? So we'll see that, that ocean water will not freeze at zero degree centigrade because it has salts in it. And the melting point is also zero degree centigrade, so if you take ice and uh, keep adding heat, when it reaches zero degrees, if you add more heat, it's going to start melting. The boiling point is equal to the condensation point, and that for water we know is 100 degrees centigrade, or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And here you are adding energy to water, and when it reaches 100 degrees centigrade, it begins to boil. And if you remove the energy that you are putting in, then it begins to condense, right? So freezing and boiling points are of water are unusually high. So what this figure here is showing is that the melting point of water is zero degree centigrade, but for a similar substance, a similar compound, actually the melting point should be minus 90 degrees centigrade, okay? Minus 90 degrees centigrade. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade, but if you take a similar compound without the special properties that water has, the bent molecule, the hydrogen bonds, and so on, then water should boil at minus 68 degrees centigrade. So it should freeze at minus 90 degrees centigrade, and it should boil at minus 68 degrees centigrade. Thank goodness that doesn't happen, because everything on Earth would be very different if that happened, right? Heat capacity or specific heat is how fast a substance can warm or cool when you add heat to it. So the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of any substance by one degree centigrade. Intuitively, you know what this is, right? If you have a pot of water and if you turn on the stove, the pot
pot is going to heat first, right? The pot, let's say, is made of metal, and the water inside is going to heat much slower because the heat capacity of the metal is much lower than the heat capacity of the water. So as you add energy from the fire to the pot, the pot is going to quickly warm up because it, the amount of heat required to raise its temperature uh, by one degree centigrade is very low, whereas the water is going to heat very slowly. It also means that when you turn off the stove, the pot is going to cool very fast, whereas the water is going to cool much slower. You can already imagine that this is going to be very important when you consider land and ocean, because the ocean is going to heat up very slowly and cool down uh, very slowly. The, so, so the water has a very high heat capacity, very high specific heat, and if you compare pure water as a heat capacity of 1, if you add mud to it, it drops by about 40 percent. Ice has a much lower heat capacity. Ice is water, but it's frozen, so its properties are very different because the molecules are arranged very differently. Oil has even lower heat capacity. Air has a very low heat capacity, so the air can be heated very fast, cooled very fast. It doesn't have any memory. It cannot keep much heat because its specific heat is very uh, low and so on. Mercury, the only metal that is available at normal temperature in liquid form, has an incredibly low heat capacity, which is why we use it in the thermometer, right? It can easily measure the temperature change because its heat capacity is near zero. These are the properties of water, temperature, heat, heat capacity. These are the three things that make a huge difference which gives us weather and climate. So something we will see again and again as we go forward and 